Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you the best Rainbow Six Siege console settings. I use controller, I'm not a Zim. And these are going to be the best for your aim, your movement, everything overall really. Recoil, I'm going to show you the attachments too that I use on the main guns after we're done going through the settings. It's all about finding the perfect sensitivity for yourself though. These might not work for you, you might need slower, you might be faster. So after I show you my settings, I'm going to be going into a training grounds and I'm going to show you how to find the right settings for you and the right sensitivity most importantly. But as you can see here, I am diamond at the end of the season. Uh, all these games are solo queue. Go check out my solo queue playlist. I will have it linked in the description down below as always. That's the main thing I do on this channel. I just got done getting the diamond. It's the last night when I'm recording this of the season. This is going to be going on the day of the new season. I think it's called Dread Factor. I'm excited to play that and use the new uh, aim mode, the aim lab thing they got going on. That's going to be good. But for this season, we went 43 and 29, 60% win right in solo queue. There were some really rough games. I even went on a five game losing streak, but still have a really, really good win rate for solo. I've been slamming squads. I just got done ruining this one team on Villa. I played them twice in a row on it. They beat me the first time because my team sucked. But then my team was a little bit better and I slammed them. I don't know if those games are going to be going on YouTube. They probably will since it was my diamond match. I'll be uploading throughout this next week for those. But anyways, let's go ahead and get in the settings. That's what you're here for. So, on general, uh, the only important thing here is a drone after prep. You don't want to have that to automatic so it kicks you off your drone right when it ends. In case you're trying to run away or something. You want to use at least semi-auto or manual. I use semi, so it kicks me off my teammates' drones because that's annoying being stuck on there. I have my match replay off. I'm on last gen, like the Xbox One original. So I don't know if it hurts my performance, so I just have it off. I never really use it anyway. Sometimes it's glitched out and doesn't even show me the matches up there. It's very weird. I have crossplay on because I'm not scared of anyone. Uh, For matchmaking preferences too, I play... My training grounds and all the ranked maps, I think that helps me warm up personally. I don't know if I'll be using that much more with the new aim labs, but we'll see. For the HUD, I actually have my health off. I think that just helps me play. So I'm not focused on my health and I play too scared or something, you know. That's about it for that, though. Uh, for audio, definitely use night mode. That's an underrated thing that a lot of people don't use. They don't know that night mode makes the footsteps louder and like the gun sounds and all the explosions near you louder so you definitely want to use night uh i'd recommend turning the dialogue down too so it's not too loud and i don't like the subtitles on my screen either for display i use 90 fov i know 83 or 84 is really good too and 87 i just recommend using 75 and up don't use below 75 you're throwing you never want to do that you can't see anything it's so bad you feel like you're zooming across the map with 90. It is hard to see sometimes, but I think it's worth it still. For brightness, I'd use anything between 60 and 65. It doesn't really matter too much. It just depends on your monitor, really. Here's the important stuff, though. You definitely want gadget and drone deployment to be advanced, so you don't get stuck in the animations when you're putting it down. I would turn aim assist off, because that's only for training grounds, and you don't want to mess up your aim. When you go into real matches, because you do not have aim assist in this game. That is not a thing. Uh, I just use classic rotation, but if you used advanced, if you're a newer player, that wasn't there back when I started playing in year two. So I've never switched and tried it. For your sensitivity, I'd recommend having your vertical a lot lower than your horizontal. Like mine's 55 compared to 85. I have a very high horizontal and a... Average vertical. You never want this as high. You'll never be flicking up and down as much as you will left and right. So it just doesn't make any sense. I do like it a little bit higher like this. I used to use 40 and 35. I tried those. But I think it's easier to control recoil, honestly, with a higher one. Because you don't have to pull down as much. And I do play the F2 quite a bit. And you have to pull down a lot with that thing. Uh, For my advanced control options, I have disabled, by the way. I just wanted to go through that fast. I was trying 60 and 30 for those, but yeah, you can play around with the advanced stuff. I just don't do it myself. I see no need because my aim's already really good. I skipped past these ones. Let me go back. 
for left stick and right stick, I'd recommend as low as you can without having any stick drift. I would do 5.5, five, but my left stick has a lot of drift. I can still feel it a little bit, but I don't want to go higher than 12. I've been on that for a long time, though, so keeping it for now. I just play on an original controller, by the way, if you were ever wondering. I don't have an Elite or anything. I used to back in the day, but I've been on this thing for years now. Uh, controller ADS, this is another important thing. I'd recommend having a lower 1X by at least a few. I have it quite a lower than the rest, but you definitely want it lower here and then go up. These should be a lot slower, though, than your actual horizontal sensitivity. More of like a hybrid thing. So 27 for the 1X feels really good for me. I have some really good shots with that. 1.534, 2X, 37, and that's the only scopes I really use. I used to use ACOG on Habana, but I don't anymore, so I don't really use any of these scopes, honestly. But I still have them set in case I do. But again, I'll show you how to find your sensitivity when we go into the training grounds. Accessibility, I don't think I missed anything, did I? Uh, I guess there's like the the aim. I didn't even know this was a thing, really. When I used to switch my settings more, I'd never seen this, so. I don't recommend playing a toggle. I didn't even know that was a controller thing, though. It's weird. For optic color, a lot of people don't feel like black is good, but I think it's better because you're not as distracted on your reticle. You're more focused on what is in the middle of it. You for sure want your screen shake intensity off. You, do, you never want that on. It's so bad. I actually had it on for this account for like half of my games before I noticed that my screen started going crazy when a fuse charge went off above me. So you don't want to find out like I did. This is another thing that a lot of people don't do. I think it's easier to see claymores and stuff, the little lights, when it's set to blue. So I use enemies on blue and me for orange. But you will have to get used to the cameras and stuff being a different color that way. You don't want to sh go around shooting your own team's drones thinking they're mozzied. Or your own team's cameras thinking they're dokabeat or something, you know. My teammates do that shit all the time somehow. It's crazy. I don't know what any of this stuff really does. Chat's not even on console, so that's strange to me. Uh, That's everything for the settings, though, so... I'm going to go ahead and jump into the training grounds part of this. So I loaded into this, and I'm being very rudely interrupted by these bots. Okay, so we're just against this wall now. You see, like, these little lines right here? There's three, four, five of them. You want to start at the first one right here? Go to the second one comfortably. And if you're over-flicking it, or under-flicking it, then you're going to want to switch your sensitivity. Like, if you start here, and you go here only, and you have trouble getting to it, make sure your sensitivity is a little bit higher. You're probably too slow. But if it's going over like that or something when you're trying to get there quickly, then you're going to want to turn your sensitivity down. So either your ADS just a little bit, or your horizontal. I'd recommend just changing your horizontal, because that, may, that means you're probably too fast doing this too, right? When you're trying to do that. But, once you're done with the first one, try to go back to the first, go to the second, and try to try to smoothly get to it like that. Don't rush yourself or anything. Just keep going back and forth to the different ones. Look, let me go to that one again. See, I went a little too far trying to go to that. And you can do it different directions too, like start over here. Try to flick left. Sorry, I kind of lost that one. These are hard to see. I know there's a good wall on Coastline for this, and I think there is on Nighthaven Labs too. But yeah, that's basically what you do in a nutshell. So just go to a map that has like different lines like that. They're kind of everywhere here even, the bricks. They're harder to see, like I said, but that just gives you more practice, doesn't it? So nothing to complain about. And with the new Aim Lab coming out to the game, like I was mentioning earlier, it's going to be easier to find your stuff. You can just follow all the bots. I'll probably make an updated video on that soon, this coming week. I just don't have access to it right now, and I want to upload this tomorrow, right when the season starts for you guys. So you can get the right settings for your ranked matches. I'm going to be on the grind for sure. But last segment of this in the training grounds, let me show you about recoil. So let's say go 10 meters away. Just look at the wall. Try to aim head level. It's going to be like right here all the time. If you go up to a barricade, actually, to learn where head level is, 
Let's go to this door. You can see right here where this X is, that's going to be their head. The part right on that every time. That's going to be head level right there. Oh, you just seen the terrorist walk by too. So he's going to walk by like right here probably, right? Obviously that's a little farther away, but you get the point. Really? You're not going to walk up? I'm trying to use an example here. Okay, he's not going to walk up. But yeah, just try to do that. So you're going to aim head level for this. Let's go like 10 meters again just for a show. Start at 10 meters and just try to control it the best you can like this. I shot a little higher than I wanted to, but that's okay. So like right there. And just keep doing that over and over in our training rounds. Just try to shoot at the same target. Practice flicking for it like that. Because you're not going to be shooting at a stationary thing in game, are you? So Just try to keep going around shooting at different things. Like go here. Oh, at this door right here. I'm using Twitch with the extended barrel. I actually think that's the move. You have really high damage with it. It's like 43, so it's always guaranteed to be a three-shot kill. And if they're hit once, then it's always going to be a two-shot kill. I thought there was a terrorist climbing this, but it's smoke. And then just go farther back. If you keep getting a small dot like I was there, just keep going farther back like that. And try to get it as good as you can there. Until you get to like a really far distance, like 20 meters. And just try to do that. I'm out of ammo, so I think you guys get the point, though. Another thing I like doing is turning headshot only on for this. And just going around and headshotting the bots. Just one-tapping them like I just did right there. And practice your pre-aim, too. Just go around and aim where heads are, basically. That's the best way to put it. That's going to get your crosshair placement a lot better. Like, you know, heads could pop out right here. Even with a pistol, just do that. And yeah, that's all there is to it, really. That's how I got my aim and movement and stuff. You just gotta grind, basically. The more you practice, the more it's gonna pay off. You gotta put in the time. I'm like a level 400 on my main account at this point, so... That would help. Okay, we're back in the menu now. I'm gonna show you my attachments for some of my popular operator choices. And I'll just show you the meta operators. So on attack, sledge, I guess I can show you that. The L8's a common weapon. I use angle grip on this one because it doesn't have much recoil. I still think it's worth it to use angle grip on those kind of guns. If you can control them very well, use angle grip and you'll get that slight ADS benefit. Some people don't think it really matters, but every millisecond matters in this game in Rainbow Six Siege. And that could be the difference between getting a lucky headshot because you're already aimed in enough or dying and that could be the difference in a round and that could be the difference in the match so if you want to rank up every match matters so i just think it's worth it to use angle grip if a gun has a 1.5 though or a 2x always use it those are the two best sights no doubt in this game like i was telling you earlier about the sensitivities i use flash hider on most weapons too it does take away the flash on your screen obviously but i think it's better to have for vertical recoil that's more important than left and right, and usually there's going to be more up and down in this game. Moving on, though. Same thing for Thatcher. Just He has the 2x scope, too, if you want that. For Ash, I don't recommend using the R4C. It's good, but I recommend using the G3. Right now I'm using Vert Grip Suppressor, but Angle Grip's also good in this one. I like Suppressor because they don't know where I'm shooting them from if I'm flanking. And I do like lurking around since I solo queue. Extended barrel is also a good choice, though, if you're not using suppressor or even flash hider if you want it for the recoil. Can't go wrong with any of them, really. Definitely use the G3 or you're throwing. I'm kidding, but that's the one I'd recommend. For the 5.56 on thermite, I just use 1.5 and flash hider. You're going to be holding angles, so there's no point in the angle grip on him. Same with OSA for that gun. For the F2, I already showed you extended barrel. That's the only option she has. The DMR is good too, but I love the F2 on console. I heard it's a little worse on PC, but you can do what you want with that. These are my console settings. I'm just going to skip all these guys. I don't play them. For IQ, if you want to use the 552, same with Grim. He's going to be a lot better this next season. I haven't even played IQ on this account, so mine's not even set up right. Use the 1.5 Flash Hider Vert. 
I use the extended actually because you get 52 damage. It's insane. That could be a two shot kill from a lot of distances. This gun is great. And she's a three speed. I do need to play IQ more for sure. She's really good. She just doesn't have anything for solo queue that I want. Like, she has claymores. She doesn't have stuns or grenades. And she can't break anything because she doesn't have the grenades. And she's not like Zofia or Ash with the breaching rounds. So, eh. She's fine for Vert since she has breach charges, but then you can't really watch her back with a claymore, so it's whatever. Buck is a really good solo queue operator. I'll probably make a solo queue operator tier list soon. I'll try to get one of those done for you guys for the new season. So just watch in the coming week or two for that. It'll be on the way. I use a laser on his gun only because of the shotgun. So I have a better spread with that if I'm using the shotgun for close range engagements. But 1.5 flash, that's a trending pattern for my guns. Always use the Gon 6 if they have it too, unless you're Dokabi. I prefer the SMG-12 on her for close range, because it's a really good gun. That last Villa match I was talking about earlier, I hit a crazy clip with that thing. Got a really nice clutch. Uh, Blackbeard, never use Blackbeard. Capital, I use the Para Extended Barrel Flash Hider on that one with the 1.5. 2X isn't a bad choice either. Habana, 1.5 Flash Hider, 2X, also good, like I said. Personal preference between those two scopes, it's all up to the player. I switch back and forth between them on the guns that have both. Uh, Jackal, 1.5 Flash. Zofia, I actually used Angle Grip for a while. I switched to Avert now, since I'm using the 2X, but if I was using the 1.5, I'd probably use Angled. Just for that speed I was talking about earlier. Her gun just is a hard decision with that, because she has a lot of recoil compared to others. Her recoil is more random than the F2, I think. So it's hard to control hers compared to that. At least for the normal player. Maybe not for me, but still. Doka B, I just use 1.5 vert on the DMR. Just like a Rooney's. Uh, I'm trying to see. Nook, I just use the suppressor because I like lurking around with her. Suppressor's cool on Nook. You're not a real Nook player if you don't use suppressor. Yana G3 again, just like Ash. Zero, I love his gun so much. One of my favorites. You have 1.5 or 2x, and I like extended barrel. You have 50 damage, so it's going to be a two shot down a lot of the time. And you have angle grip too, and he has no recoil, so I love the angle grip with it. And you get gone six hard breach with zero. He's an S tier solo op for sure, no doubt. I don't really use any of these guys. Grim's going to be really good. I'd recommend using the same as IQ, but with a 2x. I'll show you the SMG-11. That's a common gun. And for the shotgun, I just use the Reflex A. Always have for my shotguns. Always will, probably. I've tried others, but I like that one. And don't use laser either, because it gives away your position. As long as you're ADS, you're going to hit the shots anyway, so that's what I prefer. So glad Smoke Barb's going to be the meta now, too. I've been preaching it. For the SMG, though, I still use Hollow A, Vert Grip, Flash Hider. It's just the classic for me. Extended barrel probably isn't too bad either, but I don't even use smoke or mute that much these days. When I solo queue, I have to take a gun so I can kill everybody, who we're probably going to lose. Uh, I don't really use the UMP much. MP5, I use extended barrel with a 1.5 or 2x. Capcan, I use hollow A, flash hider vert. Jaeger, I use flash hider hollow vert. Frost, I use angle grip. I actually use the flash hider now. Extended barrel kind of gives away your location if you're playing in a rat corner or something. It sticks out a lot. Or just if you're around a corner, they'll see your gun first. I don't really think it makes much of a difference anyway with the numbers. I'm a big math guy, so I'm a nerd when it comes to that stuff. So trust me. Valkyrie MPX, I use hollow flash hider, kind of like Warren's, but with a 1.5. Uh, let me see. Alibi, use hollow, flash, vert. It's kind of a trending thing. Maze, I use extended barrel, I believe. He has no recoil and his gun's insane. So I just do it for the added damage, so it's always going to be a four shot. I do use vert grip, but angle grip's not bad either. Usually on defense, they'll be ADS, so I, I like the vertical grips more on defense. Attacking, you might not be ads when someone rushes at you. Warren, again, like I said for Valk. Well, my, I use Flash Hider 1.5. Anybody should. Extended Barrel actually isn't bad either. 
for Malusia, I actually use Suppressor. But you could use Extended Barrel too, just like Docs, MP5. So unless I use Flash Hide or Vert Grip, and is Vert Grip even a thing? Probably not. No. So I just use Flash Hide or Holloway. Her gun's really good too. I need to use Solus more next season. But that is going to do it for all my attachments and settings. I hope you guys learned something too from the training ground segment of this. And maybe the attachments and sensitivity settings will help you out in your games too. Hopefully this will be a successful season for all you guys watching out there. Tell me down below what rank you're aiming for this season if you made it this far into the video. Leave a like down there below if this did help you out. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.